welcome back to another tutorial, photo manipulation tutorial. We've got a giant falling asleep at a baseball game, spilling his soda and popcorn, and the camera guy gets a shot of him on the jumbotron. So sit back and relax and watch me create this photo manipulation. So starting off with this base plate, of the baseball diamond and I've got this picture of myself lying down so what I'm trying to do is mimic the perspective I'm trying to take this picture of myself with the exact same perspective that I've got or that we have going on in the baseball diamond so I've got a light that is shining light the back of my head in that direction towards my toes, trying to match the light uh, that is going on in the, uh, the base plate of the baseball diamond. So I'm gonna really quickly, loosely uh, select myself. So doing a really bad job of that, hitting control enter to uh, complete that selection. Control J to create another layer so again poorly uh, selected out but just to get an idea of is this working is this image gonna work or do I need to go back and retake this picture at a slightly different angle so before you painstakingly go through the process of using the pen tool this is just a good idea to eliminate some of that background to see if this is gonna work so I hit Control T to uh, resize myself, holding down Shift to maintain the proportions. So I've got a pretty good idea that this is going to work. So I'm gonna use the pen tool to uh, select me. And I'm gonna to try to use Puppet Warp. So if you didn't get the perspective perfect, you can go into Perspective Warp, create all these little points on yourself. So one on the head, one on the hand. Some of those points are just to hold you in position. So I'm gonna drag this one on my hip. You can see how you can really distort the image. But I'm gonna drag my hip down just ever so slightly. If you do this in a subtle way, it'll, uh, it'll look right. So and what I'm gonna do with the spilled soda, I did not include that in that original selection of myself. So I'm gonna select this by itself, just using the pen tool. So once completing that, hitting Control Enter, Get the marching ants and then control J, command J on Mac to create a layer of just that selection. I'm gonna zoom out here. Also gonna create a convert this, that is, to a smart object. So I'm gonna be resizing this. So hitting control T to go to scale, holding down shift and resizing this. So I'm gonna hit a layer mask on this layer of the spilled soda. It's right here. This just allows you using black and white, black to conceal, white to reveal. I'm gonna get rid of some of that spill. So the power of the layer mask is then I can go back to white and reestablish that spill if I wanted to. So I've got some empty seats here and I'm gonna select a uh, particular section of these seats, hitting Control Enter and then Control J to extract that on its own layer. And I'm going to put some empty seats behind me. So I didn't want to be lying down on a whole bunch of people, safety first, so I'm going to have a whole bunch of empty seats right behind me. label this red 
as the seats are primarily red, kind of a dark muted red. And I'm noticing that the perspective is not quite right. That's a little warped. So there, there is a way of fixing this. Go into edit and then perspective warp. So I'm just gonna draw out a rectangle here. It doesn't really matter the shape of the rectangle because I'm just gonna move these particular points. Gonna make sure I'm on layout up top. Move these points to the corners of that row of seats. So I think you could just hit warp up top, but I'm gonna go ahead and draw this out just in case you're wanting to use this for like a building. Draw out another one, move it up close, and it just attaches to that original rectangle. So you can use this to uh, act as an anchor for when you manipulate that row of seats. Then I'm gonna hit warp. And then you can just move these points looking at the uh, reference photo of the background, of course, and just trying to match that perspective of uh, how those seats are, are lying. Hitting the check mark and moving that into position. So you can go back into scale, control T, holding down shift, to make sure it scales uniformly. And just going back and forth and tweaking this to the point where it looks as close as possible to how those seats would look right behind me if they were empty. You can go back into perspective warp. Create another rectangle and put these on these uh, edges, hit warp up top, and just continue to alter it to uh, try to make it as perfect as possible. So I'm gonna hit a layer mask on that uh, section of seats, and using a black brush, I'm gonna just clean up this edge to switch back to white, see how you can go back and forth on that all day. Just to try to get it within the boundaries of where those seats would be. I'm gonna put those seats underneath the selection of me. And gonna have a an adjustment layer. So I'm gonna clip this to only affect those seats. You can hover in between those two layers while holding Alt and clicking. I'm just gonna reduce uh, the exposure of this using curves. I'm trying to match uh, how those seats up top look. I'm also gonna have an adjustment layer of selective color. I'm gonna clip that to only affect those seats and just start messing with the, uh, the colors here a little bit to try to match them. Still not looking right. So I'm gonna have another adjustment layer of uh, hue and saturation. I'm gonna clip that to only affect those seats. And in messing with the saturation, you can really kind of dial that in to look as close as possible to those seats behind me. So then selecting the mask of the actual seats layer, you can take a black and white brush and start to reveal some of the people in the seats. So really what you're doing is you're, you're erasing part of that layer to reveal the layer underneath. And of course the layer underneath is a section of people sitting there. 
just like the section to the right of that. So you can go in and each individual seat just kind of reveal some people as if some people like snuck back in after a while. Uh, I've been sleeping for a while, who knows? And they, they uh, decided to come back to their seats or maybe, maybe I have bought up all of those seats and because I was asleep so long that they, they, you know, started to upgrade their seat. They got a little daring that guy right there is really daring. Because if I were to wake up, it would not be good, probably. So I've got a whole bunch. There's a before and after. But did this with uh, the sections, the other sections that are right behind me and underneath my arm. So I've got all of these seats layers selected. Gonna hit Control G to group those. Label this seats. And I'm gonna right click on the layer and label that red. Just so that I know immediately, like where are the seats? You just go to where it's red because you know that you labeled them red. So I've got this uh, tray of popcorn bags. So I could not find a popcorn bag that was just on its own and so I've got this tray to uh, deal with. So I'm gonna use uh, using the pen tool, try to uh, select out where I think the perspective of the bag. So I'm going into the tray or including part of the tray with the goal of erasing that tray just so that it's a bag by itself after I complete this selection. So hitting Control Enter getting the marching ants and then control J to get that on its own layer. So hiding the original layer and I've got this bag of popcorn, but I'm gonna try to uh, using the clone stamp tool to get rid of that little chunk of that tray that you see at the bottom right. I'm gonna have a somewhat middle of the road uh, softness of brush. At holding down Alt on PC, uh, Option on Mac, you can select a certain area right at the corner there and just draw downward. And it's not gonna look perfect, but in this case, this popcorn bag is gonna be uh, so small that I'm just wanting to do you know, a halfway decent job in getting that little tray section out of there. So trying to continue the look of those red stripes. I'm gonna try to find a stripe here that would make sense in continuing that section. So reducing the brush size and sampling a little section from above, doing the same thing with that white stripe. So it's not looking great, but I think it's looking acceptable. So creating a layer mask of that popcorn bag and using black to kind of clean up the edges. I've got a fairly hard brush, somewhere around 90%. I'm just trying to guess of what the perspective of uh, that bag, just to clean up these edges a bit. And I'm gonna make that into a smart object and click on that, hit Control T and scale this down. So I'm holding down shift as I scale that down. So when I took the picture of myself, my right hand was pretending to hold a bag of popcorn. So I had some kernels of popcorn on me, like in the actual picture, but pretending to hold a bag. So you can rotate this, you just hover over one of the corners after having hit Control T and it'll turn into this different uh, icon where you can rotate the image. 
So clicking on the uh, mask portion with the black brush, you can uh, remove some of that bag and then going back in with a white brush and reestablishing some of that bag as if my fingers are now over top of the bag, kind of pushes that bag into that space. So I'm going to put a curves adjustment layer over top of that bag, clip it to only affect the popcorn bag. Try to get it to match uh, the brightness level. I'm going to reduce the brightness level, the exposure on myself later, but... So I took a whole bunch of pictures of different popcorn kernels. So I knew I wanted more popcorn than what I actually had in the scene. So I'm going to select that, hit Control Enter to select it after using the pen tool. And then Control J, get that on its own layer. And I'm going to scale, scale that down, hitting Control T, holding down Shift. And of course, because I took this picture with those actual kernels on myself, at least four or five, I know exactly what scale to reduce this extra one and other ones too. Plus I can use the shadow, the reference of the shadow of the other kernels of popcorn in which to create a realistic shadow for that one. So I'm gonna create a little shadow for that piece of popcorn so that it'll be right underneath as far as in the layers panel. So just using a black brush, using a lower opacity, and just going back and forth and adjusting the opacity and the flow, sometimes taking off the pen pressure, and just trying to create it so it looks like those ones that are right above where that's at. And of course, just take down the opacity, bring that up, sliding that to the right until it looks like those ones that are above it. So I added a whole bunch more, put some on me, put some on the uh, baseball diamond. And I'm gonna add a curves adjustment layer to myself, clip it to only affect me. And I'm gonna reduce this exposure, trying to figure out what the lighting would be because the stadium itself is blocking that sunlight that's coming in from the right, the top right. I'm gonna have a hue and a hue adjustment layer. See how you can turn this to black and white. I'm just gonna make a very subtle change there. You can barely tell the difference in a before and after. And gonna create another curves adjustment layer. It'll be clipped. Uh, to only affect me, and I'm gonna create this way too bright version of myself. And then I'm gonna con I'm gonna hit Control I to invert that. So it basically gets rid of it, just conceals it, and then you can take a brush to reveal some of that. In this case, having a super soft brush and just gonna reveal a little bit of that. I'll show you without the pen pressure that that's what that can do if there's no subtlety to it. So I'll undo that, go back and hit the pen pressure, reduce the opacity. So even if you don't have a pen with a pad to be able to utilize the pen pressure, you can pretty much do all of this with a combination of the opacity and the flow but since I have the pen with the pen pressure, you can really, with that, get into a nice subtle look of revealing, in this case, some of the highlights that the sun would be creating uh, on top of uh, the layer of myself. So putting some on my hat, just anywhere where you think there would be a highlight 
going to create another curves adjustment layer clip it to only affect me and I'm going to do the exact opposite where I'm creating this way too dark version of myself I'm going to hit control I to invert that and do the exact same thing but in this case just revealing some of that darker version of myself where there should be less light so using a super soft brush and just trying to create some volume to this uh, cutout of myself so you can go back and forth uh, for hours trying to create subtle differences with these uh, types of techniques and I've got another layer that I'm gonna create this really light yellow but it's clipped to only affect me but I am painting directly onto this layer but it, it is on its own layer so I can reduce the opacity there's with no subtlety how it's gonna look but then uh, reducing the opacity having the pen pressure this is just another way of creating a highlight in this case with just a slight uh, hint of yellow in it as if the Sun is hitting uh, just the edges of in this case my shoes get a before and after so all of these layers maybe one independently is not making that much of a difference but all of them together making quite a bit of a difference so you can always reduce the opacity bring that back up of that highlight layer and going to create another layer and this will be the exact opposite so yet another method or technique of creating sort of a darker shadow that is wrapping underneath me and so selecting black it's on its own layer so I can always reduce the opacity and going back in and really trying to darken areas that uh, should not be as light as uh, the areas above through of a before and after there so creating another layer this layer is underneath the main layer of myself and this will just be the main shadow shadow that I'm casting onto uh, the baseball diamond so I'm gonna select black and reduce the flow put the pen pressure on and just start off really in a subtle way trying to create a shadow that is right underneath where I'm at so this layer I mean the perspective is extremely important to get that right but I would say the shadow is just as important to finally cement you know me in this case or whatever picture that you're trying to combine into the base plate so that it is as believable as possible that shadow is incredibly important so extending the shadow of my feet you can see where the baseball players towards the uh, the low left you can see their shadow you can tell what direction their shadow is going in you're trying to match that their shadow is also like twice the length of them so you can tell the Sun is uh, pretty low in the sky so just trying to mimic that with the shadow that my feet would be creating
You can also create a layer mask on top of that just to get rid of some of the shadow. You can also use the eraser tool, but the layer mask, the benefit to that is you're, you're working non-destructively. So you can go back with a white or black brush and kind of reestablish what you've erased. So creating a little shadow of uh, my hand there. always reduce the opacity and bring that up with that slider so here we've got the spilled soda so it's on its own layer I do have a layer mask on that and I'm just going in with a black brush and I'm erasing uh, with pen pressure and the opacity is lower just erasing a little bit of that because it's liquid you would be able to see through this be able to see in this case like that white line of the baseball diamond and you'd be able to see some of the the green grass obviously you don't want to raise all of it um, and certain areas would be pooling up more than others be thicker so some areas would be more transparent but just to uh, set that down in there as if it's actually or has been spilled onto that baseball diamond you can get uh, into some really interesting subtleties. So obviously that glass being clear would show a little bit of that green and that brown of that sort of border to the baseball diamond. And then creating another layer here, this will be uh, the shadow layer. This will be incredibly subtle, but just to put the slight suggestion of a shadow this will be barely noticeable, but just to kind of help uh, sell the idea that that liquid is actually there. So I'm going to try to apply the shadow just on the edge of uh, where that shadow would actually be cast, knowing that the sunlight is coming from that top right. So before and after, you can barely tell there's, there's any difference whatsoever, but just something you can do. Creating another layer, trying to create some specular highlights. So that liquid is not looking very wet. So you can go in and uh, with a white brush, just try to create uh, the suggestion of some highlights, the light hitting the ice, hitting the liquid and having just a little bit of a, uh, a shine, a reaction to the light. And going back in, especially with that ice, to uh, put a little bit of white here and there to as if the light is hitting that. So here's yet another picture of myself. This is for the uh, Jumbotron. Uh, so selecting me, look at that mess. And I already hit Control T and flipped horizontal. And I'm gonna hit Control T and size this down a little bit. So I'm gonna try to fit this as if the camera operator got a shot of me put this on the Jumbotron back here. So on the base plate of the actual baseball diamond, I'm going to select this Jumbotron. So just using the pen tool, gonna connect this, hit Control Enter to select that. And I'm gonna create a layer mask on that and then hit Control I to invert it. create a layer mask on the Jumbotron version of me. And I'm going to scroll down and hit or hold down control. And I'm going to select that layer mask that I created of the Jumbotron. So that will activate that selection. Selecting the layer mask of me, 
the Jumbotron version of me. And selecting a brush. And just basically erasing all of that. It'll adhere to that selection. So several different ways of doing that. You could just old school, hard edge eraser, you know, erase that version of me to the exact size of the Jumbotron. So whatever you, whatever way you want to do it. But I'm going to hit the, uh, using the polygonal, polygonal lasso tool, I'm going to select a section behind me that is bigger than the Jumbotron. I'm going to hit Control J, get that on its own layer with the Move tool. I'm going to move that over into position. I'm going to hold down Control, select that mask of the Jumbotron. hit layer mask on the uh, section of uh, the crowd section that I had selected. Invert that and it automatically adheres to the selection of the Jumbotron that I had done earlier. You can also move this around a little bit. Like I say, it was more than, uh, it was bigger than what I needed, but you can also uh, select that little lock icon in between the layer mask, and in this case, and then you should be able to move it around independent of the mask. And creating another layer right below Jumbotron Me. I'm gonna have this be black, and of course just creating a little bit of a shadow Also putting a little bit of a shadow on the other side, just to, but not as much as where the shadow really should be. Creating another layer, clipping it to only affect Jumbotron Me, and putting a little bit of uh, highlights of where the sun should be hitting. And then reducing the opacity Here's yet another version of myself. Tried to dress up as a baseball player. Look at that complete mess of a place I have. So I actually found white pants, which was impressive. So I'm not gonna go through that, just selected me, reduced the scale with Control T, put a little shadow, as if one of the players climbed up onto my leg, as if to say, you know, what are you doing? What are you doing interrupting our game? So creating another layer here, gonna call this Sunshine. So this is a layer that is on top of all of the other layers. Gonna zoom out a little bit using the uh, polygonal lasso tool. Gonna try to figure out where the sun is at. Where is this light shining from? Don't have to be exact, but just gonna create this little rectangle and connect that, hitting shift backspace and filling this with the foreground color, which is that really light yellow. And there you go, file export, nothing more to do. Or you could go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur and really blur this out quite a bit. All right, a little bit more than halfway. Hit OK, and of course, reducing that opacity quite a bit. So just adding some haze of the sun. And of course, because it's over top of me, it really kind of pushes me into that scene. You can always go back and forth with the opacity on way up, then way back down. So there you have it. Giant falling asleep at a baseball game, spilling his drink and popcorn, and the camera guy gets a shot of him on the Jumbotron. So be sure and watch uh, the other videos on the channel. And like and subscribe, comment, 
and thanks for watching.